Hello, this is a quick setup guide on how to set up your SIM 3D Rumble Kit uh, using SimHub. Um, first of all, if you've got it, um, download SimHub. Um, I will include the link in the description below, but it's www.simhub-.com. Before I go any further into this, um, I just want to say that SIM 3D is not affiliated with SimHub, nor is it my software. This is purely software that I've used when I built my own kit in the early days and it's a great piece of software. You can get the free version which does work although you do need to manually activate the game when you start. Um, alternatively you can get a licensed version which is donationware. I personally recommend everyone to get the licensed version. Um, the licensed version A gives you a much better sort of um, feedback rate. Um, it goes from 10 FPS up to 60 FPS, so it's uh, much more responsive. And secondly, it automates whenever you start a game. So if you are jumping from sim to sim, it will do it automatically, so you haven't got to wor worry about it. Also, it is an incredible piece of software, and it, I highly recommend you support the guys that have made it. I, genuinely think it's incredible um, so going on so your sim 3d rumble kit um, obviously you've got your pedal brackets that I'm assuming you're going to have mounted by now and you've got your rumble control box you've got the front and the back I'm just going to use a very simple image for this um, very simple connection your power supply goes into the front of the USB if it's not labeled here which it should be on the later versions um, and then your USB goes the aforementioned USB slot. Then on the back you've got three ports here labeled M1, M2 and M3. It doesn't matter which which um, pedal you connect into each one, that can be controlled through SimHub so you haven't got to worry too much about that side of things. So let's go into SimHub. This will be your standard screen. You can see here that you've got a lot of available sims available here that you can get SimHub working. There are a couple of options that aren't supportive across, but most of the ones that, that people tend to use will be available on most of them. Um, so it's fairly simple. So once you've got everything plugged in, the first place you want to go to is under Arduino and the tab at the top, you want my hardware. It will pop up with a splash screen straight away saying single or multiple Arduinos. This is an Arduino based box. Um, so select single Arduino unless you've already got SimHub installed and set up, in which case you probably know what you're doing and you can get that activated. Once you get into it, you'll get a screen very similar to this. Um, it should immediately start scanning for devices. And if you've got everything plugged in, it should, should become available here. If it's detecting your USB, but coming up unrecognized, it might be that Windows hasn't installed the correct driver automatically um, when you've plugged everything in. If that happens, there is a link just here. Um, I will put this in the description. This website here, go to drivers if you need them. This Windows EXE here, open that, install those drivers, um, then come back into SimHub. It should then recognize it. If it doesn't, reset your PC and it should work after that. Once you've done that and it recognizes it, you should see detected hardware up here. As soon as that's done, we know we're, we're playing ball. From there, go into Shake It Motors. Then Motors Output, you'll see Arduino Motors and Fans. It should say four motors connected. Now here is where we can start adding effects to each pedal and decide what we want. So you'll see straight away, first of all, you've got Test Now on each channel. Um, all of the Rumble kits have a maximum of three connectors and they will always be channels one, two and three. First thing I'd recommend you do is click test now on each one. First of all, make sure everything's working correctly. And second of all, you can work out which um, Rumble motor is on which pedal and which equivalent channel it lines up with. Then below that, you can then start to play around with, with each effect. So, for example, my brake pedal is on channel 2, and my accelerator is on channel 1. I have a WinSim fan connected on channel 3. Um, so, below here you can then see a bunch of effects. Um, we've got tons of different effects. We'll tune them later, this is more about activating them. So, first of all, on channel 1, you'll see I've got wheel slip activated, and it's as simple as clicking on and off on each one. I've only got it activated on the rears myself, 
I'm not so fussed about what the front's doing in terms of feedback. I want to know when the rear's starting to try and break away from me. That's what I feel the most comfortable with. Um, I find that if you've got too much on the front, you get a bit too much vibration coming through the pedal and it kind of muddies the, the feedback effect you want and you're just getting a lot of vibration without any real help um, in what it's giving you. Then on channel two, I have two effects. I have wheels lock myself on all four corners and I also have ABS. Um, this will switch between the two. It will work. They work basically both exactly the same um, under obviously different effects, whether you're driving a ABS driven car like a GT3 or something a bit more crazy like a GT um, non ABS. And then on channel three on my Winsim, I've got static wind. Um, you can also have a Winsim set up to be speed dependent, in which case you would just turn on speed. Um, I personally don't use that. I use it static wind and I have buttons on my button box set to turn it on, off and up and down. From there, then go into effects profile. This is where we can start to tailor the effects and what each one does. Um, there is lots of different ones you can open up. You can tailor this however you want and activate whichever ones you want on the pedal. I'm just gonna go through the ones I use, just as nice and simple. First of all, ABS active. Um, the only real thing you can play around with too much in here is the pulse duration. So I've left mine fairly standard. I haven't played around with it too much. It's not very often I drive um, cars with ABS. Um, most of the cars I drive don't have ABS. Um, you can, however, control the, mar the volume here. What I would recommend is putting the master volume up here up to 100%. What then we can do is control individually each effect and tailor those rather than having to worry about a lower power on the master and bumping everything up to 100. It just makes things a little bit easier down the road. So from there, after ABS, I've then got static wind. So you can see here, I've got this set. I've got it set a mute at the moment. I've got it assigned to a button on my button box. And you can see here that you can assign a different button to control the different effects. Um, and that's as simple as clicking on them um, and then pressing the button. That will then assign it. From there, now we'll get into wheels lock and wheel slip. Now here's really where you can start tuning things to what you like. There are a lot of different settings here that you can play around with to create a completely different feel. Um, if you're not sure, my baseline settings, you'll see them on screen now. Alternatively, they are in my Discord. I'll include a link to my Discord in the, in the uh, description section. Um, also within the Discord, there under the Rumble Motor settings, there are people of sort of put their own um, rumble motor settings that they like um, including some sort of real world drivers uh, real world race drivers who have tried to replicate like a re more real world feel um, I haven't tried all of them myself um, but I definitely recommend giving them a go and, and sort of tailoring it and playing around with the settings to find a, a feel that you want for your experience back to sim hub <coughs> so first of all you can decide whether you want it on corners left right I would recommend leaving it on corners um, because then we've got four different effects. So for the wheels lock, for example, it can lock any corner and it will like, output with those with those effects. Um, now, going into the settings, um, you've got trigger when brake pedal reaches percentage. That's more um, to say that if, for example, you've locked the wheels up or you're going off track or you've had an incident and you take your foot off the pedal, it will continue to vibrate unless you have that on. That's why I've got that set at 15%. After that, we've then got the real feedback effects that we can start to tailor. You've got gamma factor, threshold, minimum force, and input gain. I'll explain what they are. Gamma factor affects the responsiveness to minor feedback and minor effects. So with braking, on threshold braking, you've got things like micro locks and nano locks, essentially a very, very minute when the tire is gripping up so much that it's trying to lock um, and it's trying to, to s just stop essentially. Um, you see it a lot in Formula One cars when they come into a turn and, and one wheel starts to lock on the inside normally if they're turning in slightly. Um, if you have that above one, it will become more responsive to minor locks. So for example, if you were to set that to two, um, that would then become 
incredibly responsive straight away. So the good thing about that is you might be able to break to a percentage, it will vibrate, but you know you've got a bit more to play on that if you really want to get to the very threshold. Me personally, I'm the opposite. I want it as unresponsive as possible. I just want to know when I'm right on the limit. Um, but it's entirely a tailorable effect. Um, the threshold, that controls just very, very statically the amount that it's going to allow it to, to lock before it starts setting off. Um, so if you have that a higher amount, it will not kick in until it's detected at a much higher lock amount. Minimum force, that controls how much vibration you get through at the start. So if you see the response curve above, at zero, that's going to have a nice steady curve coming up. Um, based on my gamma, it's been pushed back a bit. But it's a nice steady curve up, so the vibrations will get more and more intense as you start to hit threshold and as you start to, to lock the wheels and it will slowly build up and get stronger and stronger. Um, you can take you can change that by increasing the minimum force. So mine I have at 75. So as soon as I'm right on that limit, it's immediately vibrating very, very strong. <coughs> the fourth one is input gain. Now this if you're on iRacing, for example, which is the sim that I use myself, 100 is absolutely fine. There are, however, some sims that don't seem to, to read the data as well. Um, so I know some sims like Assetto Corsa, on the standard settings you will not get an effect. One thing you can do is to turn the input gain up. That controls essentially the input volume, if you will. So it will detect it at a much, a much better rate. Um, and start to, to work effectively. Um, so that's it for wheel lock. Um, and then under wheel slip, you'll see we've got very similar settings. Um, trigger when brake pedal um, reaches percentage. Um, I don't have that on, but you could have that on. Say, for example, um, essentially what that would do if you're if you're on the brakes and you want to know when the, the wheel starts to slip um, on a braking area, um, you could have that. Um, active as well then you've got trigger when throttle reaches percentage it's very similar to the wheels lock again um, and then finally mute when a wheel lock effect is currently active I have that ticked um, I don't need to I don't need both pedals vibrating when I'm locking the wheels up if I lock the wheels up for example um, but you'll see below again we've got exactly the same settings as we had before um, that work in exactly the same way so nice and simple here's where you can start to play with those again and start to tailor the effects you'll see on my volumes that i've played around with mine a bit um i haven't got them all at 100 percent um because you don't need them uh 100 you should notice that the power coming through is nice and strong um if there's not you know decent enough power um, that may be there's an issue please get in contact with me if there is um or anything's not working um that pretty much concludes this this quick sort of setup guide on how to get everything working. Um, I will include absolutely everything link-wise in the description, including also access to my Discord as well. Um, if you have any questions at all, please get a hold of me, mainly through Discord. My name is Calvin Dent. Um, thank you very much.